Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted uh, to be here and uh, to tell you something about uh, electromobility and uh, cars. At the beginning, at the start of this conference, uh, Mia and, uh, and myself, uh, for the first time here in Austria, so that's an Austrian premiere. And uh, to start with, I would like uh, to uh, thank all of you for this very, very warm welcome yesterday and today. It's real, it's a real pleasure to be here. And. Uh, I never have seen uh, such uh, such uh, a mayor in such good moods uh, as the mayor here in St. Veit an der Glan. And I also learned a word that I'm going to use, uh, that's uh, cool, lessig as we say in German, cool because electromobility is really something that's extremely cool. Apart from all the facts and uh, figures uh, and uh, charts that uh, you associate uh, with uh, electromobility and electric cars, uh, uh, rationale, etc., there is uh, one factor which uh, is the most decisive ones uh, if we talk about uh, e-cars, and this is emotion. And uh, emotion in most instances uh, uh, is something that we take for granted when we talk about normal cars, uh, but it's not really something that we expect when we talk about e-cars. Uh, today, an electric car, technologically speaking, in terms of range, speed, can not compete uh, with a conventional car. And uh, that's uh, not surprising because a conventional car uh, was nurtured and, and and was improved, refined uh, for uh, 100 years, and Mia only has been around for a year. So you need some patience, but uh, emotions is, is a very, very big factor. And today, as a designer, I will not talk so much about uh, technology and about rationale, and uh, I'm not going to present uh, any charts and diagrams, but I would like to uh, convey to you what are the parameters, uh, what are the emotional parameters uh, uh, in this uh, change of paradigm in order uh, to make people accept e-mobility, because only if e-mobility is perceived emotionally, is being accepted emotionally, and uh, uh, if uh, people be, uh, believe that an e-car is cool, then an e-car uh, will have a chance uh, to uh, maintain its position in the market. And. Uh, I would like to point out uh, the route. I would like, like to take you along this journey into uh, the world that's behind rationale and logic. My presentation uh, is entitled Mobility is Light uh, because e-mobility is only technologically feasible if we reduce weight and complexity, but it is only possible if uh, we only also uh, slim down our mind, so to speak, to uh, free uh, ourselves uh, in order to accept this uh, uh, category of vehicles, including uh, the fun and uh, the benefits uh, that they provide uh, for us. And before I do that, and before I demonstrate what is me here, and uh, how come that I talk about e-mobility, I would like uh, to show this picture. This uh, is the heart of Mia. This is our factory in uh, the western part of France. Mia uh, was founded in 2009. Uh, the car was developed, and I will talk more about the car. You can also have a look at the car outside. What's so special about Mia is that uh, it uh, uh, that we are a free, totally independent com company. Everything that was generated, that was built, including the factory, is something uh, that uh, was based on our own uh, financial uh, basis, uh, on our own thoughts and ideas. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, we are the only uh, factory uh, uh, world that uh, can that is selling an affordable e-car. We already sold uh, uh, some thousands of cars, in, uh, so we uh, we are the market leader in France in our main market. And uh, this is something that uh, we take pride. And this is this is Mia. 
But uh, let's uh, step back in history, let's make a leap in time, and I would like uh, to start my presentation with a product that I'm going to show in a moment. A product, when it was shown for the very first time, was criticized by everyone. Nobody, um, neither the potential customers and neither the so-called experts, uh, uh, thought that this uh, car would have a chance, but nonetheless, uh, this product changed the world, the car. Because when the uh, car uh, was shown with Bertha Benz for the first time, somebody said, oh, that's complete nonsense. It, uh, it's noisy. Uh, it, ha it, ha it uh, has a very, very limited range. It was compared to horses, how to feed <laughs> this car, and uh, probably it's going to break down um, in, a, in a minute. And these are the same arguments uh, that uh, we hear from experts when they talk about electric cars. And uh, just as uh, this uh, car uh, gained acceptance, uh, the same will apply uh, to uh, e-vehicles. So you, you know the developments on the left-hand side, you see the first car that uh, broke the 100 kilometers sound barrier, 1899, the Jamais from uh, France. It was an electric car. The first uh, car. Uh, that uh, had a higher speed than 100 kilometers uh, was an e-car and then the Mono Porsche. Uh, that was a vehicle which uh, was developed by Mr. Porsche as the ideal mass vehicle. It was a hybrid car in the wheels. It had an, uh, an e-motor and uh, it uh, was to be built here in Austria in Vienna. But uh, then uh, the patent was acquired by Daimler. So, an electric car already in the 90s, and in 1910 in America, there was uh, already uh, 40 Pika electrics were around, that's a Pika electric, 40,000 of these uh, were up and running in the USA, and one did not think of the environment, but uh, the car uh, was uh, praised for his uh, wonderful riding comfort, and the person uh, that uh, you see here is Mr. Baker, and he points uh, proudly at uh, a solar ins installation, so the vision was there, and that development already went in this direction. What happened then? I want to. Uh, oil was discovered, petroleum, in chiefly in uh, the state of Texas. There are old uh, photographs that uh, you may be familiar with, where uh, uh, people uh, dug a hole uh, in the ground, and uh, the oil uh, really was uh, sort of uh, spurring out, and that was a new miracle. We thought that uh, it would be unlimited, and this uh, from the, that point on. Uh, alternative vehicle development came to a halt and everybody focused on internal combustion engines. And uh, this is uh, how history went on. Uh, today, about 90 percent of uh, the oil reserves uh, uh, are located in uh, crisis regions and uh, we exploit uh, the world in order to get this stuff out of the ground and uh, we really need some change. The uh, car industry is where it is, and I have brought along some examples. My colleagues uh, from the car companies, uh, I offer my apologies if uh, uh, they see the one or the other car uh, uh, from their portfolio. So Mia is very young, so I can't uh, offer a range of products. But the uh, consequences of this of the development uh, based on oil, this uh, becoming faster, becoming bigger, uh, making uh, cars heavier. This also uh, has the consequence because everything was possible. You simply installed larger engines in the car. This is a photograph that I uh, took in Paris where we have our office. On the right hand side, you see the old Mini and on the left hand side, the new Mini. And uh, this uh, photograph uh, demonstrates uh, how the car world has changed. It doesn't mean just size, it also means added weight, uh, added complexity, and uh, all this complexity, all this additional weight uh, must be moved. Uh, another uh, picture from uh, Torino, that's the Fiat 500, and this is the other uh, Fiat, and uh, I did not treat this photograph on the computer, I, I took this uh, picture, This is uh, these are genuine cars, and this uh, demonstrates the dilemma in which we are caught today. 
And this is the added, the increased weight. The first uh, car weighed around 600 kilos, the other one about 1.5 tons. So, and uh, this uh, really uh, is an obstacle to new uh, creativity because you have uh, uh, again to add uh, such uh, such a big battery that the car is even becoming more complex and, and heavier. As a, as a consequence. Of course, uh, cars have grown due to technological requirements, uh, safety concerns, etc. But uh, uh, the cars also have reached uh, these dimensions based, uh, let me put it that way, based on a development uh, which uh, um, uh, became a household word, and this is a premium. The, uh, in order to install premium, uh, cars uh, became more comfortable, they uh, have uh, more and more gimmicks, etc., etc., and in order to satisfy uh, this uh, uh, premium requirements, as a matter of fact, this is the outcome because the uh, interior space is occupied by other things and the car has to grow in order to accommodate uh, all these features. Plus, the, uh, the designer must not be forgotten either because uh, the uh, designer, and I am a designer, in the many years uh, we thought that uh, a car has to be dynamic, it has to have muscles and shoulders uh, and uh, a fast windscreen and everything. And uh, even as a consequence, even small cars, as shown here, have shoulders, uh, big wheels, and as a consequence, uh, the uh, cars grow on the outside, uh, but the inside uh, is that they become smaller, and the consequence is more weight, more weight, more weight. And if somebody believes uh, that uh, you uh, will be attractive uh, to girls uh, driving such a car, well, this is uh, a matter of the past, uh, and it's absurd uh, 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 to take a four-wheel drive and uh, then turn it into a, a sports car and then uh, just use it uh, in the city. So forget it. It is out. It's not, no longer en vogue.